is throwing in a lot of uh, expert opinion from uh, our uh, body team. Again, you can run all the FBAs you want, but if you're looking at it and you're not an expert, it doesn't necessarily mean a lot to you. You miss a lot of opportunities. So when we went through this process, we found that there were some uh, parts that we could keep with the same basic geometry. We would just go ahead and change uh, the grading thickness. And then in the end, our result was we had less carryover parts in essence, but at the same time, we were able to save over 20 kilograms uh, in our basic lower body design. Moving into the uppers, uh, you know, the uppers are all specific for the bolt. There's really not a lot of carryover uh, at all. So we applied that same uh, MDO process, but uh, here we actually used a lot more expert opinion on top of that uh, because we were also looking, because again, the geometry was all specific to the bolt, so we wanted to take advantage of that. And we were also looking to get some uh, performance improvements as well. So in the end, the result was that only about a quarter of our uppers uh, remain mild steel in the areas where we need deep draw, and we've got over 10% press hardened hot stamp steel in the critical structure areas. And what did we get? A 25 kilogram reduction from our original design. And not only did it get lighter, but it also got better. Uh, compared to our uh, original uh, variants, we actually had a 25% increase in our rear torsional rigidity, and, and this is great uh, when you're considering the hatchback design. Next, I want to move us in to talk about the tires and wheels um, and work we did with uh, two of our partner suppliers, both Alcoa and Goodyear. We decided to utilize a, a forged wheel with a flow formed rim, uh, and with this we were able to achieve over 10 kilograms of vehicle savings and still provide our design studio with the look that they were after. A typical cast rim might be over 4 millimeters thick and our flow formed rim comes in under 3. And also the forging process allows us to come in and do an undercut, as you see in the inset here along the rim, to further reduce more mass. Now originally we knew that the studio was interested in a five-spoke design, so we worked up front with Alcoa to first develop and design the lightest five-spoke generic wheel that we could. And this came in uh, through uh, a number of uh, uh, runs at about uh, 7.85 kilograms. So based on this, knowing we're going to have to add something to get to the surface, and we set a limit of 8 kilograms on the entire wheel. We then took this generic wheel, brought it into the studio, and laid the desired surface on top of that. And again, working early and often with Alcoa and the studio, several dozen FEA iterations were made, each of these iterations being able to be turned around in one to two days. And as you can see here from the initial uh, version based on that generic design all the way through the final there, we got rid of those hot spots that you see in the, in the lower uh, row and we're able to deliver a design that uh, you can see just very few differences from the initial design. Moving on to the tire, again working early and often, this time with Goodyear and with our vehicle performance team, the result was not only a vehicle mass savings of 14 kilograms, but also uh, yielded, in my opinion, the best balanced high efficiency tire in General Motors. We had time for roughly a dozen different design submissions that allowed us to achieve a 20% improvement in rolling resistance for tires with equal stopping, traction, cornering, and snow performance. And this improvement in rolling resistance is worth about a mile and a half in EV operation or 1.5 uh, miles per gallon. And as a matter of fact, this tire is so good, it's already found its way onto other products like our Eco Cruise that hooks in at 42 miles per gallon on the highway. So, next, let's talk about aerodynamics, where the bolt comes in at 0.28 CD based on the new uh, SAE standard J2881, which I think there have been some presentations about here or either earlier in the day or yesterday. And we did this by carefully managing our front end airflow to get the aerodynamics and the thermal uh, performance that we were after. Basically, you see here, this upper part of the grill almost passes no air at all except just around the perimeter here in a few spots. Our lower grill down here is positioned exactly at the stagnation point where the air starts to look for which direction it wants to go, and it gets to go right in there. And then we also have an air dam, which is quite tall, but it's made of a flexible material, so that 
during any parking maneuvers. If it does get uh, rubbed up against, it isn't damaged. We also lowered the body around the wheels and tires and utilized the stock mounted mirror design. As you'll see here in this uh, simulation, the air that does enter uh, through the lower grill comes in. We do have a four layer heat exchanger. That's another whole presentation. And then it exits out the bottom there, very evenly distributed, as you can see by the tracers. Also, I want to point out, if you notice from the uh, uh, lower edge of the fascia up to the drive line, covers, uh, complete shielding, and then also rearward of the engine, complete aero body panels uh, underneath. We also spent many hours working on the, uh, in the wind tunnel, working on the body sides, wheel flares and the trailing edges of both the body, the spoiler, everything there. And all in all, the aerodynamics were improved by roughly 150 counts from the original, um, from the original concept design, which is, uh, contributes uh, six miles of EV range and 6.5 mile improvement in uh, uh, miles per gallon. Good. Good. Chevy Volke, how are we doing? All right. One of the great things about being on the Chevy Volt program, uh, well, not always great, but, um, is the amount of publicity and PR we get. We got some great PR. We got a couple of Kevin and Randy. I can't see them, but I know you're out there. Uh, and we get a lot of help creating these great videos. Uh, we had videos of when we started the car. We had videos of when we launched at DM. We have great animations. So guys, I appreciate that. It makes our job as engineers telling the story a lot better. Um, I got to tell you, though, uh, I want to take a minute to thank uh, uh, not only the GM engineers who are sitting amongst you around the tables, I'm going to mention a couple names that don't offend anybody. I think Scott Miller, Rob Bolio, Tony Pazabot, Bill Walls, Bill Skijinsky, Larry Nitz, uh, and then there's a number of the rest of you here. And I also want to mention all our great suppliers uh, who helped us put these components and put this technology together. So please join me in thanking everyone for the hard effort on the show. I'll be brief. I know it's been a um, long day and a long night. Uh, I think that the reason that, uh, frankly, we, I, I believe we've been very successful with the, bolt, with the Bolt, and I think the reason is, is primarily two things. One is we did what we said we were going to do when we started this thing. We created a vehicle that's fully capable EV range of 40 miles, and uh, it has an onboard range extender, and we launched it on time, and we launched it with very high quality. My guess is not everybody thought we could do it. Um, there might have been some people thinking we might not do it, but we did it, and we did it very well. The second piece, and I think it goes um, behind a lot of these awards, and matter of fact, I'm going to go past this to the next slide. Uh, we also got this feedback from our customers. We took the first 250 customers who bought Volts uh, after they put a couple thousand miles on them. We had a clinic. We brought them in. We said, what do you think of the car? Uh, this slide here is, uh, is a slide that you put together, and basically the font size is relative to the frequency of that comment. So uh, this gets to my second point of why the car's done so well. It's all the technology that these three talked about and everything that you all helped us put in the car, we managed to integrate seamlessly into the vehicle. So that when you got in the car and you drove it, yes, it was an EV, yes, it had EV range, but the, almost the best thing, the big surprise about the car, was how great it drove and how seamless it moved between the modes Pam talked about, how comfortable it was, how quiet it was. There's one uh, that's just above the, the hood of the car down there that's perfect. So uh, when you drive the car and when you're fortunate like I am and, and my colleagues are, to spend, I've been driving the car since September. Uh, my car that I'm purchasing myself was built Friday in Deham. I'm going to have two charge stations in my house. I love this car. Uh, you know, I could be driving uh, uh, eight passenger Escalades. Great product, but this car is so much fun to drive. It's so uh, it's so comfortable, quiet, and I think that was the second piece that people maybe didn't expect. So I believe that is kind of the secret to our success. A very clear, concise, uh, driven message of what the vehicle needed to be. I think we hit that, and I think we kind of surprised everybody with the rest. We have one final clip here. Some of you may have seen this, and then uh, we'll be done. Let's play it.